Hi, Casey from Retroactive Arcade here. Um, once again, we're going to do a quick little video. This one I'm going to do about coin doors. Uh, I'm going to go from start to finish on how to build it, what to look for in your coin mech and stuff like that. If you're having problems with it, what, what you can do to fix it. Um, so from top to bottom, how it works. But more uh, straight to the point in the end is how to wire it correctly, especially if you're going to daisy chain it off of a free play button or a coin button up on your console or under or wherever you're putting it. Um, and then you're also going to have the coin door as well. So having two credit set setups, um, you have to wire the micro switches uh, correctly. Now that only takes two seconds, so I'm going to go through the whole process on how to put these together. A lot of people have issues with the coin mechs themselves. I'm getting a lot of questions about those, so I'm going to start off with that. So your coin mech, uh, basic coin mech is going to look like this. This specific one is from China. Uh, there's one, there's they come from all over the place, Suzo Hap and all that other stuff has them from the States and they have them out of the UK and everything else too. But uh, basically, um, I find that this happens more with the ones from China more than anything else, is they get the, the, the quarter gets caught in here. But first off, every single coin door that you get, you want to take the magnet out. So there's a magnet right in here on this plate. Now whether you put the plate back on or not is up to you. Um, I usually just take them off and chuck them. Uh, just because when we send them out for customers and stuff like that, I don't want them messing around with it too much. Uh, so, you know, sometimes it's easier if you just don't give them the option. Uh, some people do want the option, so it, it just depends. But now that that part's blank, that magnet that's in there, um, that was used to be in there for like when kids used to put slugs and stuff in the machine, it would catch them and then you'd press the thing and it would just go out into the, into the, um, uh, the reject hole or whatever. And uh, now all quarters and nickels and dimes and all that stuff like that are made with so much iron and metal in them now. Uh, they're not all just nickel and whatever, silver and stuff. So uh, they get stuck every time. I don't even know why they put the darn magnets in there to begin with. Now, the other thing is, is when you get your quarter and you drop it in, there's an actuator here. I call it the little coin dumb waiter, but uh, this actuator has, an, has two arms, one to stop it when it goes all the way down, and the other one on the inside uh, that we'll point at right here with my middle finger, I'm not uh, telling anybody off, but uh, that, that actuator there, that arm, cradles the quarter down and then lets it loose to go this direction into the coin mech. Now sometimes what happens is, is it misses that arm and it just lodges itself down in here underneath the arm if it misses it. So the Chinese ones are notorious for it. I don't know why, uh, but there's a quick fix. It takes two seconds. Um, so what happens is, is you just open it up. I'll get to the inside of this thing for you here. It's spring loaded, so it's kind of like a little, <clears throat> a little mouse trap. But basically, what you want to do is grab that arm I was talking about right here that's going to go around. It's at a perfect 90 degree angle. Now what you want to do is bend it inside so it's at about a 70 to 60 degree angle. 85, you can try, you can play around with it if you have to bend it more and more and more, that's not a big deal. Um, there's no such thing as going too far except for if you bend it too much and it won't actually go down, um, then it won't work. So you want to bend it back towards you again. Now this one's set up, it's going to work fine. Uh, we'll close it up. The next thing you need to know is, depending on the coin mech that you get, anything from US, UK, that type of thing should be okay. You shouldn't have to do that. These six pins, they usually just come with two at the top, two at the bottom. The three, third one is for the specific reason on these ones that they're from China. They only have one locking mechanism, mechanism on the back, so they do put these extra pins in for support. Now, I always take out the middle one on the, on the back side. Reason being is... When we flip this coin door over, we've got this flap here that holds your coin mech in. <clears throat> and these holes that are in here are where the pins are going to line up. The middle one, for some reason, never lines up. So I don't know why they put it in there. It's kind of redundant and just kind of extra work. And then when they don't put these things together on you and you get them home and stuff, you think that it's supposed to work and you don't realize that that pin comes off or whatever it is. <clears throat> now a guy's stuck and he's calling me or texting us or emailing us or whatever it is. How do I fix that? And it is a quick, easy fix. So hopefully, uh, hopefully these, these things kind of help you out before you find yourself in trouble. So this one just has a top um, connector. Most of them will have a connector from the bottom as well. The reason why they don't on this one is because this is where our micro switch mounts and it would just be in the way. So now to make sure and test that everything's working, you want to press your reject button 
if that if your coin door is moving up in there and it's opening it up on you then you're good to go all right so next what we're going to do is sometimes they just send you a coin door fully built and everything's ready to go but then they send you the switch on the side you're like what the hell how do i do that uh, it's pretty straightforward you got to bend the wire but you got to know where to bend the wire so you usually just line it up to where it's going to go hold it in place it sits pretty snug like that so basically what i do is rule of thumb for me is this hole right here for where you're going to put a screw in to hold it down that's where i want to make my first bend in my wire and i want to do about a 35 to 45 degree bend okay so i just make a straight little bend at that hole not straight but it's the wire stays straight and the bend goes well i'd say about 35 degrees so we're sitting there like so hopefully we're zoomed in enough so we're halfway there so now i'm gonna put it up we're good see it's going underneath our line we're gonna go into this half moon or crescent slot that's down there so now leave it in there line it up and then what we're gonna do is line up our line up our pliers then you're gonna want to do a 90 degree bend the opposite direction okay if you mess this up um, it's not bad as long as you don't keep bending in the same spot if you bent it 90 degrees like such and you're in the wrong spot you can bend it back once if you do it twice or three times it'll break for sure and then you got to kind of either start all over again with the new one and these things are hard to find and they're not cheap so basically you put it back in and you want to see if it works this one's a little tight i got to bend it a little bit more i didn't get a full 90 90 degrees on it sometimes you got to bend it back an extra couple degrees but that's all it was so you just see that how quick the adjustment is now we're good to go i'm going to put my screws in now we're good to go now if you don't do it snug enough or you do it too snug they will um, break the inside of the there so be really careful with it it's just plastic as you can see we're good to go now we've got a fully functional fully built um, uh, coin door except for the lock lock straightforward I'm not going to show you how to deal with that now so what we're going to do on this build is I'm going to show you this is going to be a representation of our credit button on our console top so I have it all put together like it would be you got your micro switch in there and everything else how to wire it first of all you're gonna to want to daisy chain your ground like every other button now what you can do in some cases so say this is like central on your cocked on your console top and you have all your other stuff going to it and let's say it's halfway and you went from right to left or whatever that's fine you can cut your ground wire and your coin wire that you went to here splice into it at that point and go down to your coin door now the, what i mean by that is is that you don't have to have it in sequence on your daisy chain it just has to be connected to the daisy chain for your ground so basically you can tee off on it and have two separate directions and instead of just having one i hope you understand what i mean by that but basically so say we have it coming in we're going to go our ground here and then your ground on these uh, is always the first pin now sometimes you get these um, micro switches here for the coin door and they look just like a regular micro switch like this but they'll be pointing upwards like that it'll probably be more like that um, but basically what we want to do here is is you've always got your ground right your other one here is a closed pin and you have an open pin now you always when you're when you're uh, wiring your arcade machines uh, to all your buttons and push buttons your basic stuff automatically goes to your closed pin because you're opening and closing it while you're playing your game so you go to your closed pin right not closed pin closed pin okay so that's your regular button we all know how to do that hopefully if you don't watch my other videos on how to wire buttons uh, that'll show you how to do that now with this going over now you want to go to the open side so you don't want to take the same out well, you don't want to take the same input as 
what you did with your micro switch to begin with. You want to go with the open side. The reason being is, is what's going to happen is if you wire them both to the same prong on, the same, on a different switch, they're going to cancel each other out and not work. I get this question constantly. We probably have three or four calls like this a week on how to fix this or emails and stuff like that. How do I wire a coin door? Especially anybody who buys a coin door from us, they want to know how to do it. Everybody runs into this problem for some reason. Um, I'm sure you'd figure it out by, by fluke or whatever, but if you watch a five to ten minute video or whatever, you can kind of get the whole thing, get a big grasp of the whole thing, and it just uh, it, it goes smoothly. So remember, last but not least, we'll just go over it one more time. You want your ground regular, you want your closed pin, and you want your open prong. So closed prong, open prong, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then you do the same on these micro switches. So if it was, if this was the actual micro switch that you had down here, you would have it on the top pin, right? For your secondary. For your first or primary, you always go closed. Secondary, you always go open. That's it, that's all, nice and simple. Hopefully that helps. Uh, come and visit us anytime you want. If you have any uh, suggestions on videos and stuff that you want us to do, feel free to post below in our <clears throat> on our YouTube channel and or email us directly. Uh, we're always just a phone call away as well. Thank you very much and uh, we'll see you soon.